It's been basically exactly one year since DaVinci Resolve for the iPad was released. Today, I wanna to talk about my experience for the past year while using it, the pros and cons of why you may want to use it or not want to use it. Now, as I open this wedding project, which you can actually check out the full video uh, from a couple days ago, we can see that we run into kind of our first issue one or more of the OpenFX plugins is not available. So while Blackmagic did a fantastic job at porting over basically every feature that DaVinci Resolve has, there are still a number of uh, plugins, both third-party and first-party OpenFX plugins that aren't really supported. I do wish during this dialog box, it would tell you specifically which one it was, similar to LUTs, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but for now, we kind of just have to be like, oh, where did I have open effects? Did I have like DeFlickr somewhere that's not available or something like that? Now, for anyone who hasn't watched all the previous DaVinci Resolve videos that I've made for the iPad, uh, you may think that you're limited to just the cut and color page. But about a couple weeks or a month after the release, um, another creator, Daniel, found uh, a basically keyboard shortcut to where you can turn on all of the other pages of Resolve. And so I have a map to my shift one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I want the edit page, I'm just gonna hit shift F3. If you wanna learn how to do that and what I'm actually talking about here, you can check out this video in the card above. Uh, but yeah, it allows you to get all of the other pages and I like the edit page over the cut page so we can see our entire project here. Now you'll also notice that I have no hard drives plugged into my iPad. Originally, and I still do it a lot, I could take this project or the drive that has all the original footage and plug it into the iPad and work off of that. But I really have been enjoying the Blackmagic Cloud option to where I upload proxies to the cloud and then it syncs directly to here. So we can see this little dialog box here uh, it's syncing just over a gig worth of other stuff. I believe I just finished uploading all the proxies here. And so the nice thing is, is whether you're working on a secondary device, you share this with someone else. As soon as I import another asset to this project, it's going to upload a proxy version and sync that to everyone else. Now, if I go up here at the top and turn off preferred proxies, and I say uh, disable all proxies, everything's going to go offline because none of this footage is actually locally saved in terms of the original files. So I can say prefer camera originals. So that way, if I do plug in the hard drive, it will access the originals over the proxies. But you'll see that it also shows the proxies here um, because that's all it has. So it's totally up to you. You can also depends how good your device is gonna play it back. And I wanna throw it out there that this is an 8K timeline because I'm showing off the DJI Ronin 8K. And so if I go and play some of this stuff here, and again, I know these are proxies, but the fact that I can work on an 8K timeline with 8K footage of any sort on an iPad, it's just incredible. Now we can see at the bottom right hand corner of our footage here, it says missing LUT. And we can see that the footage is no longer graded as it is in the final product. And this is because one of the things that doesn't sync in Blackmagic Cloud libraries is the LUT folder. And I really hope they add this, but we can go in and uh, fix this kind of ourselves. So I did actually put, you can See them in the little folders right there. I did copy the LUTs to my desktop here. So I can open up my files here. If I go to iCloud Drive, my desktop, I can see the two LUTs that are used in this project. And so I'm gonna select those two and I'm gonna say move. I'm gonna say on my iPad, we're gonna go to DaVinci Resolve. We can see our nice LUT folder there. And I'm gonna copy those two files. So now I'll reboot Resolve. We'll get our project loaded back in and we'll see if that fixed anything. And while we're waiting for this project to load, I do wanna throw it out there that it is also the year to the day anniversary of me launching my DaVinci Resolve uh, course. Since its launch, I've created videos about everything you need to know about switching to DaVinci Resolve or getting started with DaVinci Resolve, both for iPad as well as the normal desktop version. We talked about how to switch from Adobe Premiere 
talk about how to switch from Final Cut. I give you access to hundreds of gigs of sample footage and projects that you can play around with yourself. And right now I have all my guides marked down to a crazy discount. So you should check them out in the link in the description if you're interested in learning more about DaVinci Resolve. And recently we crossed over a thousand people who have joined these courses. So thank you all so much for this amazing year. And I can't wait to keep adding more content soon. All right, so we've relaunched Resolve here and we can go to our LUTs. So we can see here that they're not in the DJI and then specific folders that we had them in on the computer. But by selecting this, it's not going to remap it. So I'd have to go into every single one. So if you want to make sure that your color grading work syncs, and again, especially if you're working with someone else, you want to make sure that your LUT file structure also matches so that way it can find it uh, in the proper folder because it's not just going to look anywhere in the LUT folder, similar to how you have to link up your footage and it's gonna look for a specific path, uh, you need to develop that here as well. Now we've seen other updates to other pro video applications, including the release of Final Cut for iPad, which everyone thought would be the only potential contender to DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. Uh, but to be honest, it, it has its pros. It's similar to Final Cut on the desktop, it definitely has a specifically designed interface for the iPad, but they more designed it for you not to have a setup like this with a keyboard, but more just to hold it like this. And I actually do have a Final Cut for iPad guide as well, which I'm actually totally remaking because I made it in Italy and I just think it could be better. And so for all the people who have joined, know that a new one is coming at the very start of the year, I promise. But yeah, so I have guides on both, but Final Cut is definitely more of a like, if you enjoy working with the Apple Pencil, um, with your hands, you don't have a keyboard, it is very much designed for that sort of setup. DaVinci Resolve, while you still, of course, can use your finger and Apple Pencil and touch around everywhere, but it shares the same exact design as its desktop counterpart, and so it really works best or more efficiently, I think, with using a keyboard, mouse, or even like the speed editor like I have here. The one place that I absolutely love not using a keyboard or anything, and where I'll kind of put everything down, is when I am color grading. I love using the Apple Pencil, and as someone who doesn't have uh, color wheels to play with and stuff, I think this is just a way more fun experience to be able to go in and add some masks and it just feels more intuitive how we can kind of play around with all of this stuff on the iPad. I feel myself being a lot faster than using a mouse and it's just just more enjoyable. For myself I'm very grateful that even after that hack was kind of found out that you could get access to all the pages Everyone was very afraid all year of like, is the next update going to remove the ability to see those pages? And Blackmagic has released plenty of updates throughout the year. Every time they update the desktop version, the iPad version gets updated as well. And they haven't taken away this ability. Now, of course, they said the other pages that aren't like right out the box when you first open it up, the cut and color page aren't 100% supported, so you may experience bugs or limitations. If you reach out to Blackmagic for support, they're not, of course, going to like diagnose the issue because it's not officially supported. And the fact that you can import your own LUTs, Motion VFX also created a M installer version for iPads. So pretty much all of my Motion VFX plugins, minus a couple or a couple features within each plugin pack because of some iPad limitation is pretty much here. So if I go back to my project here, at the start of this video, I actually have two plugins that play and both of them work perfectly and they play back perfectly as well. So honestly, one year later, I am incredibly impressed with where DaVinci Resolve is for the iPad. I would love to hear what you guys think and what your experience has been throughout this past year as well. Let me know down in the comments below. I hope everyone is having a safe and happy holiday season, and I'll see you guys in the next video.